Every current Yu-Gi-Oh deck just break dances, and I'll prove it to you. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. But it does contain the unstoppable dueling wave. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So glad to see every single one of you yet again. Before we get into this Olympic level topic, I just want to real quickly divert your attention to the good old discord in the description below if you are tired of konami and their absolute ineptitude at managing their own game not giving out ban list rarity bumping everything making the game just miserable leaving snake eyes to run roughshod where many people have not played in six months because the game is so degenerate look no further than our discord in our discord we have our own format with our own ban list where we have hit degenerate crap like floodgates like extra deck negates like generic ones, not like in theme, like Dragoonities or whatever. No, like generic extra deck negates, floodgates, uh, stupid, like uninteractive stuff. We've gotten rid of that, right? The game is fun. You can go first, you can go second. If you've seen our tournament recaps, you kind of get like the idea of like uh, how this looks. I'll link them up top if you want to check them out. We have gotten rid of literally all of these degenerate strats. If that sounds like something you'd like to partake in, don't be shy. Go down in the description, click the link below, join the Discord. You won't regret it. And don't be shy. What's the worst thing that could happen? You actually go have fun with this game that we're all tortured by? You might actually have fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Ooh, brother, ooh! Fun, what's that ooh? So if that appeals to you, see you over there. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Yu-Gi-Oh! decks in the modern era love to breakdance. But real quickly, let's define our term. Nice to meet Can you. Can we get our terms right first? First, me, first things first. What do we mean by breakdancing? Breakdancing is the incessant incessant ability of modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks to have cards that insist on moving elsewhere from where they originally were, about on average every three seconds. One of the most egregious offenders of this concept is Labyrinth, amongst like many others. But Labyrinth is what really made me sink this. Like I didn't think of this concept until I played against Labyrinth a hundred times. A layman might confuse this and uh, assume that I'm just talking about like turn zero plays, but it's not. It's not the case. It's much different than turn. It's, it's a subtle difference from turn zero plays. Part of it is turn zero, right? Where you uh, you're literally trying to set up and they go ham no no it's also the fact that they can you did something oh wait now we're moving here now this is going here now this is wait no uh, where am i at oh, oh 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 try to try to get it you got to be quicker than that either cards move faster than light or they stick to the board like glue kind of like voice this voice back to labyrinth i'll preface this by saying i like labyrinth in concept i just think its execution is a little bit obnoxious labyrinth does this thing where the moment you start playing you play a card on the field play two cards play three whatever they go hold that thought now it's my turn they intrude on your party and start break dancing on your table just on the head like flipping around and the moment you react to that here comes another break dancer from the hand it's your turn one you normal summon a monster and activate its effect the labyrinth player will then proceed to immediately pitch crew clock then pitch the stove with another card minus threeing themselves and setting up one trap from the deck that they can use immediately do you have the ash or the bell no oh goody then back to our regular scheduled program special summon lovely from the deck activate areas dance 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 burn but destroy a card in hand and the moment you respond to any of this oh arios comes back from the grave and the big welcome is now bouncing something and do you have a card in your hand that you really needed? Pop, 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 pop. No need to play it, good sir. It's already in the grave. We took care of it as a butler should. <sighs> I get what they were going for. And I get in modern day, trap decks are a little bit power crept. But you can't just make trap cards into quick play spells because a monster is discarded to the, to the grave. And then just go, look, it's a trap deck. Well, technically, it's kind of like Sky Striker, if we're being fair. But hey, that's just one offender. There's plenty more. Look back at tier format. And one of the best offenders in Havnis, the trapeze dancer. The moment you breathe, oh, oh, Havnis, mill three, mill five. Now we're going to make, here comes Rulkalos. Here comes uh, Glido Heart. Here comes Kikalos. Here comes everybody. Everybody's coming to the party. And we can't stop, won't stop. Oh, look, we just got an Ishizu shuffle in the grave. Oh, my God, Ishizu Miller, you lose. I hope you weren't uh, hoping to play on turn zero, friend. If you are, you should have your Dark Ruler ready going first because it's Rukalos, Kaleido Heart, and something else probably staring you down. And you think I'm being hyperbolic. Let's go further. Rescue Ass has an inbuilt breakdancer in its deck in Impulse. Your opponent activates monster effect. It's like having this. Blue, summon a guy from deck. Oh, draw two, discard one, or special summon airlifter. Bam, I get to draw. It's not as obnoxious as some of the other ones because it doesn't get to do that much except maybe get a search or a draw two, uh, discard one, but still, it's like chill. Just chill, dude. Like, let's, let's chill. Like, basically, to play modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to be an owl on crack because at any moment, at every time, a 
of the day, of every second, you have to be ready for 376 interactions to happen at any time. Oh my god, look at... Oh my god, you triggered my effect. What do you mean I triggered your effect? You have no cards on the field. But wait, I don't need cards on the field to play now. But it's not its not even just them. Snake Eyes, right? Okay, they don't have a sick hand trigger. Flamberg gets to summon a dude from your spawn trap zone to the field on your opponent's turn. Which makes IP, which makes it into SP, which are, there goes more Yoinkie, Sploinkie plays. Brandon has... Quignall, who, oh, you summoned a guy, now I get to banish this from the deck, summon a Despian guy, or summon a Dogmatic from deck, oh, Brandon Red, now I get to fuse on your terms, summon this, summon that, Brandon Banishment, fuse with your guys. On top of Albion, FDKing you. Being a Brandon player, I worry about Nibiru more on my opponent's turn than I worry about it on mine. That's how many times you summon and do stuff on your opponent, like you just, you just go too hard. Every card nowadays, as a prerequisite, says, during the main phase, quick effect, break dance on your opponent's turn. You tell me that's not the case. Hell, even Fire Kings, a freaking structure deck that just came out last year, has, if you run enough Fire King cards and you don't just crap all the Snake Eyes cards in there, if you draw Garunix and Kirin, right, you can Kirin pop any fire in your hand, summon Garunix from hand, a Grunix will pop Kieran. Well, you, you literally are automatically interacting on turn zero with your opponent, popping their cards and summoning a dude, setting yourself up for maybe a rank A play. Now, am I saying this is a completely a bad thing? No. Decks have had this ability for the longest time. I mean, decks have been able to play on your opponent's turn for years and years and years now, basically since like Secret Slayer's format. But it just feels like cards now have like effects attached to them, like basically like they're on wheels. Cards aren't cards anymore. They're like RC cars. We're like... Oh, you thought he was there, but now he's not. Like, I recently tried Whitewoods, which is like not even a meta deck at the moment. And uh, the tuners have effects to bounce the synchros from grave or field to the extra deck to special summon themselves. And what this does is lets you dodge targeting effects, lets you dodge DD Crow effects, Bestial effects, lets you plus if you get them in the grave. And you can only, you only need to summon, you only, have, you only need to have one of each guy in your extra deck to be able to play because you just bounce it back, summon him again, right? It's the most ingenious thing ever. It's awesome, but it's kind of obnoxious. It's nuts. It's a super, super cool design. But like, quick effect, monster reborn. It's like Dark World, quick effect. I know we've been kind of trying to figure out what this Yu-Gi-Oh era is called. Some people have called it the modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh. Some pretentious people call it the postmodern era, like we're artists or something. Uh, I'd like to propose another name. I call it the breakdancing era. Thank you all for tuning in. If you like this video, please subscribe down below because I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Every subscription matters and you guys are real MVPs for subscribing and liking these videos and your support has been invaluable. Thank you again. Other than that, please check this video out because it's pretty sweet and other than that, I will see ya as always.